Only about 70 bucks separates you from the cheapest iPhone that still gets system updates. The price for which you can go from an old Android to an equally old but iPhone. Yes, on a small. Yes, with an old screen. Yes, used. Yes, 16 gigs, but if you're okay with it, then in your hands will be a pass to a bizarre world of iPhones. Completely opposite from today's budget segment. For a little extra over the old Apple, Androids give you more screen size, more megapixels, cores and gigabytes. You can put an SD card, it will be basically a new phone, so it must be a pretty strong argument to choose SE. Besides me, several other people will appear in this video. Very different, but with one thing in common. The SE was the first or almost the first iPhones after the cheap Android. And believe me, their opinions differ. I think after this video you too will decide what's best specifically for you. And if you choose a new phone, in the video description I'll leave sponsored links to the most popular models of Android phones. By making purchases through them, you'll support my channel. And now it's very important to me, because my main channel cannot keep me due to the war in Ukraine. I am from Kharkiv. And this is how my street looks like right now. Also, I have Patreon. Thank you. Unless your previous phone was Nokia or some sort of HTC from 2010, whenever you'll take the SE, there's always be the same question. That's it? All I get for the money I spent? Yes, because of the amazing survivability of the design, I've built the impression that it's normal to look like this. Such a phone fits into a modern world, because it's not that old, and whenever you look, you suddenly find a guy with one in a pocket. And then you remember that SE came out 6 years ago, but in fact in almost 10. After all, the SE is an updated 5S, which updated the iPhone 5 from 2012. And if the camera or processor have become significantly better, the display is not one a bit. Just by determining your attitude to it, you can determine the attitude to the whole SE in general. If you spend a lot of time watching Twitch or YouTube, then immediately know. The screen is not enough and you either have to hold the phone too close or sacrifice on small details. If you are taller than 185cm, forget it too. The keyboard will become too small and it will be a norm of life to regularly miss a key while typing messages. I am 184, the screen is small for me. Since I have rather large fingers, it was uncomfortable to type, I was constantly missing keys. Or you'll become a criminal who responds with the two second voice messages. Don't do that. All the apps are designed for larger screens, which makes owner of SE feels like an unloved child. No one of designers and developers want your phone to exist, but they have to work with the interface to make program appear in the App Store. The newer the application, the more obvious shut the work is. Somewhere they don't do anything at all because of a bunch of elements on the screen. How do you fix it? You can't. That's why buttons are microscopic. Somewhere they just don't give a sh** and straight up copy-paste giant elements of the interface from a bigger screen. By doing so, SE become even smaller. And so on Instagram. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing, at least, they gave up this progressive design. And now Instagram is fine. The phone is perfect in terms of size because I have small hands. It just fits so I can reach my thumb to any part of the screen. It is now unacceptably small. Beautiful as a phone. It's the perfect device for people who use the smartphone primarily as a phone. And it's small, it's great in the hand, it's cheap. Perfect. For me, pluses lie in the minuses. At first I could not formulate what exactly attracts me. I hold it in my hand, I like it. I use it, I like it. Only a few days later running into a subway, I caught myself thinking how great it was to hold the phone in a fist. Such a forgotten feeling, the whole phone lies in my hand, resting with its sharp edges in my palm. It's so intimate, my phone. A similar feeling is triggered when I pick up a push-button phones. Just as cozy, only build quality is worse. 
So the screen. The contrast is frankly disappointing. After the iPhone 6 and newer, SE looks faded and whitish. When 5S came out, the screen was taken from the 5. And when the 5S updated to the SE, again, the screen was untouched. It's 9 and a half years old. It's not even first grade anymore. The screen is outdated. It's hard to style it, especially if you try to go black and white. Dark tones looks burnt out, which makes the style more likely to be called grey and white, but not black and white. The brightness is only enough for morning and evening. In the daytime, especially in summer, you can hardly see anything. Well, after a budget Android, the camera is awesome. I don't... I mean... Camera is good. SE and the original Google Pixel share the lead in camera among phones in a $100 range. Only unlike the Pixel, SE did not have serious defects and with time the display did not burn out. So it's much easier to pick up SE in a good condition. Anyway, the camera is really good. The same module as 6S, differences from iPhone 7 are minimal, from 8 or 10 to... After the budget Android, SE literally spurs you to take photos. Already from the standard camera application, pictures come out decently, especially if it's just another snapshot of notes, sushi, your cool car, your dog, or whatever you usually shoot. Everything will look good as long as you don't turn on the front-facing camera or don't get into the dark places. It gets tricky in the evening and the results will rise between decent and bad. The SE and 6S were the first iPhones to support shooting in RAW. You can take it from the standard app, third-party app is needed, I use Lightroom. After DSLR, the RAW files from the iPhone seems a bit dull, want more flexibility. However, it still can get nice results. The main thing is to get at least 32 gig version, otherwise it will be silly. You hold the phone, you have the camera, but you won't able to store a damn thing. 16 gig version is very funny. You get the phone and only 5 gigs is really available. Install some basics and you're left with 3.5. Download some music, fill up cache and that's it. Don't even think about games. It's difficult to use and instead of tiny pocket assistant, you get a constant headache about storage space. Just forget about 16 gigs. Sometimes I get unicums in a comment section who write that everything now is in the cloud storage and you don't need to have your own memory on a phone. God, no. 32 gigs is minimum for a normal life, 64 if you are going to shoot a lot. There's also a 128 gig version and if you are able to find them for a reasonable price also interesting, but usually they are rare and expensive. Forget it. I owned two SEs, both on 16 gigs. I don't recommend it. <laughs> 32 gigs. <laughs> I have 2000 photos, I wouldn't have enough, I was limited by 64. But 64 is good, 16 is not. In terms of money, 64 is a bit too much for an SE. I think for about the same money you can get 6S with 16 gigs. It's a little more expensive, yeah, 6S with 16. And the phone says, oops, I'm out of memory, clean it up. I go into the gallery and there's practically nothing there. Oh yeah, the camera specs. 12 megapixel main camera, shoots 4K in 30 FPS. There's no stabilization, so it's better not to shake with hands. In the daytime, it gets great videos. In the evening, there's not enough light and you can hardly see anything. Front camera 1.2 megapixel, enough for me. Once better, take 6S. It didn't always work. It doesn't work. Can I trash talk? There's only two genders. People with normal fingers and those who hate first generation Touch ID. <laughs> Seriously. I've owned four devices with it and always the technology worked correctly. Sometimes I had to apply fingers two, three times, but mostly good and it turned out to be a revelation that there's a big group of people it just doesn't respond to. Terrible! This piece of shit just doesn't work! It doesn't even try when I set up Touch ID. I take my finger and phone reacts. I take another person's finger and the scanner either doesn't read at all 
or gather some information and then resets anyway. And the finger is clean, not greasy, no scratches. Mystic. With the second version of Touch ID, the problem disappears. Using 6S I am not mad, the 6S is fine, SE is annoying. In my hands is the last iPhone with a mini jack. Given the price, it can be easily seen as an iPod with the function of the phone and some other improvements, maybe except of some quality. Comparing to the MacBook Pro 2015, SE loses. First, the laptop is louder, which you can hear even through the video. The smartphone falls short about 3 clicks of volume. Second, the sound from the laptop is more detailed and rocks the bass better. The low end gets tighter. Here I'm not sure if the video will make a difference. Also, YouTube imposes copyright restrictions, so just trust me. In general, SE can give around 85% of MacBook's performance while playing from the headphones. It must be enough if the smartphone is used with earbuds or some other cheap earbuds. In this case, the only difference will be in volume. What cannot be said about the speaker? Listening to music or watching videos from it, the sound is not even 5 out of 10. Here I'll set a bar on 3. Perhaps a better description would be a shrieking mush of slightly distinguishable sounds. Yeah. After the iPhone 7, it's hard to perceive the SE speaker. The only option where it sounds great is when you want to listen to a lo-fi or a quiet piano. The phone gives off a distinctively radio tinge, making the composition even more cozy. Otherwise it's bad. After the iPhone 7 I lack a good vibration. To be quiet at home, all my devices are on silent mode and the only place I've received notification is a bottom right corner on a computer. That's until the SE came along. And you probably have that friend who can't formulate a thought into one message, but instead sends a sentence by one or two words. As it begins. And if you also forgot to turn on the night mode before going to bed, there's sure to be a second friend with a disrupted sleep schedule. And at 5 o'clock in the morning. The Taptic engine that appeared in iPhone 6S is much nicer. I miss it. But the processor is enough. To be honest, it was a bit scary to upgrade to new versions of iOS. Looking at how the 6S Plus starts to lag, it seems that SE will turn on into the same thing. Surprisingly, there was only subtle luck in some animations. Otherwise, the phone is pleasure to use. For three years now, my main smartphone has been an iPhone 7 and I have not updated since iOS 12. The SE on iOS 14 works just a little worse. Switching from one smartphone to another, I don't feel a big difference in the speed of the system. For games, I tried World of Tanks Blitz. All settings on maximum except anti-aliasing give the smoothest 60 FPS. Call of Duty is fine. I won't focus my attention on Among Us and other light games, they work well. But the Asphalt 9 on the other hand is better not to install. The game is dynamic and tied to fast decisions when choosing a path if you not include manual control. Even including it, the constant long freezes will not give a good gaming experience. PUBG on balanced settings is nice. Choosing better graphics leads to uncomfortable gameplay. Better to spend your power reserve to increase FPS, so that on a tiny screen there's a little more chance to beat the enemy. In general, it's strange to buy a C for games. I mean, I'm not judging, sometimes I too want to play when there's nothing to do. It's just that there's not enough screen size on iPhone 7 and my fingers cover half of it. And here... And without power bank, it's unlikely you'll play for a long time, because behind the small size of the case, 
lies a small size battery. Half a day and had to recharge. That is necessary to have a power bank. I can't say that I'm an active smartphone user. I mean, I don't spend much time with it and I was quite enough for a day. With my use, it lasts for a day or day and a half. But it's me, a guy who don't live on a phone. Sometimes I use messenger, camera, flashlight, browser, listen music through a Bluetooth and sometimes watch YouTube. If you hang out for a few hours in Instagram, TikTok or some mobile donation hall, the phone will last only until the middle of the day and so you have to carry a power bank. If you try to summarize, the SE is controversial. Having strong pros and cons, it's impossible to say unequivocally whether it's good. For my taste, it passes all young people with active use of the phone. It's uncomfortable to type a lot, watch stories, videos. For all of you, 6S will be much more interesting purchase, just not the 16 gigs. There's another kind of person, like me. They don't like big size phones. They want a device that fits comfortably in their hand, looks good, is well assembled and doesn't lag. iPhone 13 mini can be a perfect match if you're ready to pay basically 10 times extra. As he can handle these options, too bad the screen technology is frankly outdated. If it was at least at the level of the iPhone 6, it would be much better. And that was all I wanted to tell you, I hope you enjoyed. If so, I'll be glad if you don't forget to press the like and also subscribe if you want to see more videos. I'll see you there soon, my name is Roma, bye.